Hello world! Today I'll show you how to match drone footage with raw footage from a more professional camera like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. The challenge with matching drone footage from consumer drones with their smaller sensors is that drone footage just doesn't have the dynamic range or the same pleasing highlight roll-offs that you'll typically get from the high-end cinema cameras. And with the trend being that almost all producers of videos or films these days see a benefit from some kind of drone footage, like establishing shots to set the scene, b-rolls for a variety of shots, or reveals to add cinematic interest, the ability to color match the drone footage to the footage from the more professional cameras have never been more important. Even though the drone footage is only shown maybe for a couple of seconds, you want to make sure the footage blends in perfectly with the rest of the shots. You don't want the viewer to notice that a series of shots comes from different cameras. That's where the experienced color grader comes into the picture. We often hear about making your footage look cinematic, whatever that means. But traditionally, when you think of cinematic footage, you refer to footage shot on film with the characteristics that came from film. Things like soft, gentle highlight roll-offs, lifted blacks, and often low contrast levels and an overall softness to the image. Footage shot on film just tends to have some sort of character to it. So the challenge here is that drone footage tends to look very video-like, especially if you don't shoot in a flat log profile like D-Log. So I guess you could say it's almost the opposite of film. It's footage that looks overly sharpened with high saturation levels sometimes weird looking or outright blown out skies. And if it's shot with a fast shutter speed or a shutter speed that's too fast, that can make it look even worse. Sometimes you hear people being awestruck of drone footage because it's in 4K or 5K, it has lots of detail and it has a high amount of saturation and being amazed of the sharpness you can get when you zoom in. But guess what? That kind of footage is not going to blend in well with footage from a high-end cinema camera. Take one of the world's best camera manufacturers, Ari. They just launched a new top-of-the-line professional camera, the Ari Alexa 35. And guess the resolution? No, Ari is not going for 6 or 8K sensors. It's 4.6K. And it will probably be recognized as one of the best cinematic cameras for the next decade. Why? Well, the number of pixels is not relevant to make footage look good alone. Instead, Ari, among other things, focuses on amazing color signs and a massive 17 stops of dynamic range. And even though no monitor have the ability to show that dynamic range, it just make the, makes the roll-offs look super soft and nice. That, and world-class lenses, is where the cinematic quality is found not in the race to get to the highest number of pixels. So the first thing you want to do when you shoot your drone footage is to ensure you get the best possible image quality at capture by shooting in log. Get the exposure spot on, don't clip your highlights, use the lowest ISO possible and control your aperture with your NDs. You could say a good starting point is that much more important when shooting with lower quality cameras that needs to blend in with high-end camera footage. Once you've done that, the fun of color grading and matching the footage can begin. So let's jump on over to DaVinci Resolve and take a look at how you get the drone footage into the same world as a cinema camera in post. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and the first thing you want to do is make sure you set up correctly. So you go into color management and for this, we're going to work in a non-color managed workflow, so we're not going to select color manage, but DaVinci YRGB. We will be working in a working or timeline color space, that's the same thing, of DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, and we're going to output to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And why are we choosing DaVinci Wide Gamut? Well, if you look at this visualization of all the colors the human eye can see, you have your basic Rec. 709, which is what most monitors can show, and that's represented by this smaller triangle here in the center. That's a very small 
uh, set of uh, image data and, and colors. And if you limit yourself to only Rec 709, you don't have the same amount of um, colors and image data to reproduce and or, or to color correct. And you might end up with an image that breaks apart very quick. So by choosing the Da Vinci wide gamut, which is the big triangle, you see represented or visualized here on the outside, you can see you have a much larger spectrum of colors to work with. And by doing that, you already from the get go, give yourself much more image data and a much better chance of color matching and color grading your footage. This is a drone clip from the Mavic 3 Cine. If we go into the edit page here and you click on file, the file and file info, the inspector, oops, sorry, the inspector here and the file info, you can see it's ProRes 422HQ. Uh, that means DaVinci cannot read the metadata from the file. It doesn't know the color space. We're gonna have to tell it. The second clip here is shot on Blackmagic in RAW. It's a 6K footage. And these are obviously shot in two different color spaces. So we're gonna bring them into the same color space where we're gonna do all our grading in. So the first thing is I'm gonna do a new node. I'm gonna label this in and I'm gonna create a new node. I'm sorry, a node after that. I'm gonna call that out. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring our footage from both cameras via a color space transform into the same color, uh, color space. And that's the pipeline here where we're going to do the color grading and then we're going to go out to a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So the, how, to do that you go into notes, oh sorry, we're going to go into notes here and we're gonna go color space transform and this first clip is the drone footage so we're gonna tell DaVinci that our input is shot in D gamut and in D log and we want to work in the highest possible color space and gamma DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate and for the output, I'm going to bring this in, organize this a little bit. For the output, we're going to do the opposite thing almost. You're going to go from our working color space, Da Vinci White Gamut, and Da Vinci Intermediate, and we're going to output to a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Color space and gamma because that's what we're going to deliver to. So our image has been normalized and we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to create an in note and an out note. In note, I'm going to take my input color space of Blackmagic. This is a bit more confusing with Blackmagic. They've got so many color spaces and gammas, but you're going to go for I shot this on film generation five and we're going to bring it into the DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate. That's what we're going to work in. After we've done our work, we're going to output from DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate and exact same thing as the other clip to Rec. 709 gamma 2.4. So this clip has been normalized as well. So the order of operations is important here. If I go make a note before and a note after my color space transform, if I clip the highlights here, you can see down here in the waveform, there's no clipped highlights here. Everything is well within the scope. So if I go crazy and clip them and go back there, and then I go back, you can see I have the highlight details still. But let's say I clip them here before the transform. I go back after the transform and I bring it back. Look what happened down here. I clipped it. Clipped all the information because I'm working after this color space transform. So I clipped them, 
I clipped them before and I lost them after. So let's undo that. And let's keep the input node first. You can do stuff before the input node and you can do stuff after the output node. But in general, you want to do your grading within these two nodes. So let's get going. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a series of nodes. And the first one here is going to be my exposure. And it's going to be a balance node. And this one I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep that for hue because I have some issues with the greens here. These two clips are not taking the same time of year. This one, the drone shot, is taken, um, yeah, just a few days ago with my Mavic. So that looks like very, very green. There's a lot of sun it's in the middle of the day. This is taken last autumn. You can see the leaves on the ground and it's, 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 the sun is lower in the sky, it's much warmer. So these are two very different clips, but we can get them into the same, same world. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna look at my scopes. Now, it's normalized, but I wanna work a little bit on my curves. I wanna make it look a little nicer. So I'm gonna set a fixed point here. I wanna lower the shadows a little bit. and uh, maybe bring the highlights down. And for the offset, I'm gonna go to the parade. Normally I have more scopes up, but, I'm oh, sorry, um, like to scope. But for this screen recording, all I can do is show you one scope at a time. So I wanna bring it in a little bit more natural. So we're kinda like, balanced and naturalized the image here. But let's say you wanna do something extreme and add a film print emulation. Now film print emulations are a way of bringing your footage from video into some of the original old film prints. And to do that, DaVinci has supplied you with a number of film looks. These are also available in the free version and the very popular Kodak 2383. Now. This is made for Rec. 709, which is our output. And you have three flavors. We're gonna choose the warmer one here. And we're gonna add that to our lot, or to our node here. I'm gonna call that 2383. And you might be like, whoa, that looks terrible. Yeah, but we're not done. This film print works on a Cineon Gamma. So we have to transport transform our footage once again to an output gamma of Cineon. That's what the film print, there you go. Um, I'm not gonna rename that. So that's what the film print emulation expects. You have to be in Cineon. Obviously this is totally blown out and um, that's why I didn't do too much exposure corrections before uh, because we wanna go back here on the Parade, and look now, we can bring the lift down, we still have details, obviously don't want to clip anything in the skies here, I'm going to turn this one off, and this one off, so you can better see the screen here, and what you want to do is, you want to find a hero frame in your footage, a frame that shows the essence of that clip and that has the details in it, so Let's say the story is, this is an establishing shot and I wanna focus on this house and this tree because that's where the girl is sitting. That's what we wanna show with this clip. Um, so let's take a hero frame. That's what you wanna grade for. So the important thing is not the sky here. It's the setting, it's the house. Here we have some sun. So let's use this. That's our hero frame. I put a marker down here so I can find it again. Um, and let's work on the exposure. So obviously you want to bring the highlights down. I, I'm going to work in curves because you have a lot more controls in curves. Um, and I'm going to come back and adjust this after I'm taking a look at the 
the second clip. Okay, let's say that's good. Let's go back to our vector scope and take a look at the balance. So the balance here is a bit, it's yellow. Yeah, we want that and we don't want too much magenta now. Find some anchor points when you go from one shot to another. What we have here is the sun. We don't have any skin in the first one, but we do have some asphalt. So um, I want to take a note of that when, I'm, when we go to our frame here. We want to don't want the asphalt to be magenta, and yeah, let's say we like that look. Maybe it's a little bit pushed, but um, that's okay. That's let's say that's how we like it. We're gonna lift the shadows just a tad and. Let's say we want it there. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for the second image. We're gonna do an exposure note, a balance note, and a hue if necessary. And then we're gonna do a film print emulation. And I'm just gonna copy the note here from the other clip because that's the exact same thing we're gonna do now. And whoa, that looks terribly overexposed. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna go check out our waveform here. We're gonna bring out, bring down our gamma. There will be some clipping because this up here is probably clipped a little bit, but what you want to do now, oops, this is all wrong. Just gonna reset that. I had the offset, offset switch on. I'm working on a mini panel, so it's uh, it's a bit quicker, and um, yeah, I can work with both lift and gamma, or gamma and gain. I can work with two wheels at once. Um, that looks nice. Like I for a start, so. Let's see, what I'm gonna do is, let's say this clip is done. Um, I can see already I want a little bit more warmth into this. So, I'm gonna offset this away. I don't want too much green, but I do want, do want a little bit of warmth in the, in the highlights. Okay, so let's play this shift from clip number one to two. Yeah, that's not bad. She's sitting under the sun, but um, I get the impression. Let's play it last or oh, one more time. It's warm, she's sitting down here, let's say. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's how you can color grade footage and get drone footage into the same world as a Blackmagic Pocket RAW camera, or RAW footage, and um, you're working in the same color space, you're outputting to the same color space and camera from here on out. It's just a matter of spending time on matching, but you are in the same color space and the same gamma, so it's much, much more easy. The footage is gonna behave the same, and the, uh, the grading tools are gonna behave the same because you are in the same space. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you liked that, and um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment in the, uh, in the video, or give us a like and let me know if you need something else.